Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the Rookie Stripes podcast here on Racing News Now. I'm Garth Allen, and that is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Tyler Guthrie. How's it going? Well, as you can see, I'm wearing a NFL jersey, so we're recording on a Sunday for the first time in ever. Uh, we're not doing it late Tuesday evening for once. So, But apparently football is still more important than Rookie Stripes because we have to do this earlier in the morning than usual. So he can get to watching his football games. Kickoffs in about an hour and 15 minutes. So that's all you're going to get this week. Sorry. I mean, that's all we usually get. So I don't know that we're really losing anything outside of my beauty sleep, which I need a lot of. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about having the yeah, Bristol race at Saturday night. Not only just Saturday night in general for a cup race. That's a cool thing anyway but now that they've actually got football season going on we're not directly competing against nfl every week right now so cool and i'm very happy that we're going to be back to two pavement races at bristol next year because Mm -hmm. bristol dirt (laughs) you just got to make sure that attendance is good for the spring race which i don't it hasn't been been in recent years and with how this car races on bristol i don't think it's going to go very well we're probably going to go down to just the one bristol race being the fall race at night but that wouldn't surprise me in fact that's what i had heard right before the announcement came that there would be two bristol races next year it was just going back to the paved surface um was that there was just going to be one bristol race and it was going to be the night race so i was kind of surprised to see that it actually is going to be two races um because prior to it becoming the dirt race Attendance had not been great in recent years for that spring race, Um, which as much as I didn't like the dirt race, it actually surprises me they changed it because attendance did seem to be pretty good for the dirt race. Yeah, I wasn't ever really too far on the the dirt race is stupid crowd, but (laughs) I mean, it was different. And yes, because it's the Cup Series, it was stupid at times, but I thought it was a cool little thing to add into the sport and adds a lot of history to NASCAR because that's what NASCAR started on was dirt ovals and to just listen to all this negative input from people that were going to the race anyway is still kind of, I would assume that there was a lot of money involved with trying to get all the dirt in there and all that. So they're probably going to break even on not having to do that and having the crowd versus not having to do it, not having the crowd. So, I don't know. I just, I thought it was a cool idea, and I thought it was a lot of NASCAR fans just complaining about nothing again. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't see this spring Bristol race lasting more than a couple of years at all. I don't either, unless they can make some drastic changes with the car that makes it better on short tracks, which... I have been hearing rumblings lately that the cup car is getting a complete overhaul next year. Yeah, I've heard they're at least going to take a stab at it, which is good. I like NASCAR, you know, not, I guess, taking the initiative, but at least trying, you know, listening Mm -hmm. to input. Um, Was there some news that came out about the Chicago street course this weekend, too, or was that just a rumor mill? Uh, not that I saw. If there was, I must have missed it. Um, must have been a rumor I saw that we're going back to street course next year and then to Joliet in 2025. Yeah, I, I think that was just a rumor because I didn't see anything official on that. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anything official, but that also wouldn't surprise me based on just the city of Chicago's input on the street course, which I know. That's the thing, was... though. Why Why would they go back for a second year? When it's a three-year contract, why wouldn't they go back for the third year if if they're not happy with the race, end it now? Right. Be- why go for the second year when there's still a year after that on the contract if you're going to end it early? Why not just end it early now? I did hear somebody like that knows somebody at Chicagoland or something like that did say that the track team has been told to keep the track ready for NASCAR. So, I guess we'll see them back there at some point. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't know if that's where that's rumors coming from. They said, be ready, not like you're on the schedule for next year. And I think it is probably too close to be able to set up another race for that weekend. I know they haven't announced a schedule for next year yet. Have they? No. Um, and last I had heard, which was about a month ago, um, they were still trying to iron it out. Like it wasn't even that close to completely figured out yet. So, um, I, I do see some some fairly major changes coming next year. Um, the initial rumor I had heard whenever the Chicago Street Race was announced was that they were going to put Cup and Xfinity on the street course and trucks and Arca at Chicagoland. So okay, I don't know if maybe that's the plan and it just hasn't been officially announced yet. Um but that's what I had, the initial plan that I had heard was that was the, the plan for Chicago was street race cup and Xfinity and then put uh truck and trucks and Arca on the oval and Joliet. Yeah, that would be all right. I just, I don't think the trucks being on the oval would make it really look like a great place for cup series to go back to because trucks don't really do great on mile and a half. So I don't think. I think it depends on the mile and a half. Like I, I don't know that trucks are terrible on the mile Kansas and a half. The Kansas race looked pretty boring. Did you not see the finish? The finish I mean, was cool, but just I, like, I, I, I will give you race, credit. They, those trucks look like they got way too much drag for tracks like that, and they they show the onboards, and it's like RPMs in the lowest range they can possibly be, and they're not gaining any speed, and it's like good lord. <laughs> Now, I will say, I've been one of those guys that says, don't say it's a great race just because of the finish, and I literally just said, look at the finish. So, Come on, Garth. <laughs> you know, I'm a hypocrite sometimes. It is what it is. We both are. It's okay. Yes. Yes, we are. Just call this hypocrite stripes. Yeah, pretty much at this point. <laughs> <laughs> With the complete 180 I did on the Chicago street course, might as well, but... Yeah. yeah. I see, that's, we'll see that's the that thing, goes. though. I wouldn't call you a hypocrite for that, though. Because you watched the race and changed your opinion on it based on the race, not yeah. You you didn't see the race say one thing and then come back a couple weeks later and go, oh no, it was actually really good. Yeah, I don't know. I might actually try to go next year. I doubt it because ticket prices were ridiculous this year. But I think general admission was like three hundred dollars or some shit for this race, mm -hmm. which. Okay, <laughs> that's a, one way to not get anybody to go, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, you say that, but that place was packed. It was, and I don't know who was paying that much for those tickets. I know there was one place they said there was people, like, that wasn't actually part of the track, that they were, like, just looking over the fence. I would do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People did that uh, at Indy when they had the 500 in August during COVID. They just walked up to the gate. Oh, really? Watch. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me, actually. No, it doesn't surprise me either. I just, I just remember seeing some of it like on Twitter and being like, that's actually a good idea. And the track didn't do anything about it. I mean, to an extent, that makes sense because the track couldn't sell tickets for that race. So right. if you really wanted to be there, you had to do something a little creative. And my guess is the track didn't do anything about it because weren't they planning on selling tickets? And then IU Health said no. Yeah. Yeah. They so they're probably do, like, what? They were going to do like a quarter crowd or a 50 percent crowd or mm -hmm. something like that. And then like last minute, they're like, yeah, no, you're not doing that. That's what I thought. So, yeah, the track is probably looking at that going, well, screw you, IU Health. <laughs> Pretty much. We don't really care. We're going to we're going to turn a blind eye to this about the most useless contribution to the world. Thank you. Right. You health. <laughs> um, the other big news from this weekend, uh, Zane Smith is going cup racing next week, next next weekend, next year. Yeah. Um, and I mean, he may be going cup racing next weekend. I don't know if he's in a front row car next week or not. Um, That's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> In one of the weirdest cup signings I've ever seen, um, he signed a contract. Okay, so this almost feels like reminiscent of when Eric Jones went to Furniture Row for a year. 
before he went to Gibbs. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not exactly the same because um, Zane has signed with Trackhouse to be a full-time driver for Trackhouse in the Cup Series. But, at least for next year, he is going to be in a Spire car that is fully funded and provided by Trackhouse, I believe is my understanding. Now, Justin Marks did clarify in the press conference that this is not a technical alliance where they will be supplying um pieces for the entire spire team just zane's car now and he was asked well why not just go ahead and put him in a third track house car then why put him at spire and justin's response was basically well it's gonna sound stupid but feather lights are like eight months out right now so Apparently, logistically, to get every piece that is needed to fund a th to to field a third car is not feasible at the moment. So that makes me believe this is a one year thing, and he's going to be a track out like fully a track house driver in twenty twenty five. But for now, until they can get a featherlight trailer and whatever else they need that they can't get before the start of twenty twenty four, Zane will be at Spire. Yeah, I'm very really interesting sure. that it's basically a third track house car, but it's going to be branded as Spire. I'm not really sure how track house expects to do this without a technical alliance with Spire for them to work on that car and get all the setups and everything they need. They're going to need to know everything about the car and then the rest of the team's going to know everything about the track house car. I'm almost wondering I don't know where their shops are. Trackhouse and Spire might have shops that are very close to each other. I'm almost wondering if the car is not going to be prepared in the Trackhouse shop, and then maybe a Spire hauler comes over and picks it up. Like, I don't know what the logistics of this are, but well, there's probably some is, way to make this work. My question is, if you're going to do that, why don't you field the third car at Trackhouse and buy Spire's trailer. Yeah, okay, good point. I hadn't thought of that. I don't know. This is this is a very weird situation. Like I there's a lot more questions than there are answers with this. Well, cuz this it, it's got to be more than just the trailer. Like I he used the trailer as the example. Is this a Trackhouse charter or a Spire charter that they're using? Well, it's if a Spire it's a, charter. If it's a Spire charter, then it makes sense. They don't want to give up their charter unless the other team's going to actually field the car. Well, Spire just bought the charter. Spire is buying yeah. the 78 charter from LiveFast. What an ironic name for a team. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so... See, that's the other thing, too, is if that charter was on the market... Why didn't Sp why didn't Trackhouse buy it? Maybe Trackhouse didn't have the money to buy the charter and the trailer, and they're just doing this for now. I don't know. I don't know. How I don't know about that. Like, for. I have a hard time believing Trackhouse didn't have the money for all that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I feel like Trackhouse would have had more money for it than Spire does. See, this would make sense if it was a technical alliance with Spire. Because then I, it it just makes sense that way because then they have their mm -hmm. equipment and they're just kind of borrowing their driver for a third track house car that's actually a Spire car. That would make sense. But the fact that they've come out and publicly said it's not a technical alliance, I don't really know how they expect this to go well. I don't either. See, that's the thing. And, and, and that's where it would have been exactly like the Eric Jones Furniture Row situation because Furniture Row obviously was technically aligned with Joe Gibbs racing. So they were basically just extra Joe Gibbs cars. Yeah. But that's apparently not what this is going to be. So I don't know. It's, it's very weird. The semantics of this don't make a lot of sense at face value. And I'm interested to see how this goes. Like is Zane going to be fast in this car? And if he is, is he going to be disproportionately faster than his Spire teammates? And if yeah, that's, that's the case, gonna... why is he a Spire car? 
Well, and if he's just, like, ridiculously faster than the other two Spire cars, that's gonna make the Spire team a little, you know, sketchy. Mm Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to be in a team where the third car that just brought in this year you know is faster because the other team that you're competing against without a technical alliance with is just that much faster than you. Now, I wonder, though, I feel like Spire is going to be better next year. I mean, look at what Corey LaJoy did this weekend. Corey LaJoy legitimately led laps and almost won stage one at Bristol. Yeah. Um, and then he had his little kerfluffle in, uh, was that in stage two? Um, so, yeah. So, but he had speed. Some of them, probably the most speed I've ever seen out of Corey LaJoy in that seven car outside of Daytona, Talladega and Atlanta. He did take out Joey Logano. So thank you for your service. (laughs) Right. Um, so I see some potential there for them being better next year. And it sounds like Carson Hosevar is going to the 77 next year. So that team you might put, actually be good next year. Exactly. You put Corey LaJoy and Carson Hosevar in the pure Spire cars with Zane Smith in the Spire slash track house car. I see some definite improvement for Spire next year. Now, are they going to be consistently competing for wins? I doubt it. That I say that, but Hosevar was stupid fast in the 42 last night. Yeah. Um, much faster than Noah Gragson was all year in that 42 car. So that makes me think Hosevar might be in for a very good rookie season next year. Well, and I would uh, argue, like, you made the point of if they're going to be competing for wins all the time. I don't think you had to be competing for wins in the Cup Series right now. If Not in this system. If you're competing for top 10s, the top 10 is basically any of those can win at the last end of the race restart. Mm-hmm. If you're well, in the top 10, you're good to go. Right. Well, and combine that with the fact of the playoff system where all you got to do is win a race and you're in the playoffs. You just got to get... Lucky may not be the word for it, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, you got to get lucky once or twice, win a race. All of a sudden, you got one or two Spire cars in the playoffs. I mean, yeah. Michael McDowell's in the playoffs or was in the playoffs this year until last night. Um, Ricky Stenhouse was in the playoffs this year and until last night. Um, so <laughs> At least it can Michael happen. McDowell won a track that you had to actually think about. Yeah. Well, and and McDowell was probably going to make the playoffs even on points yeah Um, because he was like 15th in points when he won at indy so it's not like he had had a bad season and just backed into a win um he didn't back into the win at all he dominated at indy but um stenhouse i think also would have made the playoffs on points i believe he was top 16 points wise at the end of the regular season, if I remember correctly. So that's interesting because I don't think he ran that well all year. You got to remember though, top 16 is over half of the like legitimately competitive cars in this, in the series. Yeah. I just don't remember him really being inside the top 20 a whole lot. That's because Fox and, most of the time, NBC don't show past, like, 12th. Yeah, that's true. You you forget that there's more than, like, 10 cars in the race because they never show it unless they wreck. Yeah, which is weird because you used to have, what, 43 cars and mm-hmm. you always knew where everybody was. Yeah, because they, they would always do stuff like they do a through the field where they'd, yeah. like, bounce between pit reporters and they'd literally go position by position talking about these drivers, what they've done in the race, where they are, what their strategy is. For and they'd go back to like 20. 10. Huh? For more than just the top 10. Yeah, they'd go back to like 20th or 25th doing those half the time. And you really got a sense of you knew what was happening even in the mid pack. You don't get that anymore because they don't do things like that anymore. No, it's focus on the leader making laps at Bristol. <laughs> mm hmm. Which, yeah. to be fair, there was some decent battles for the lead. Um, I was 
fairly impressed with Ty Gibbs. Um, yeah. Very fast at the end of the race, almost won until Denny came up and stole it from him late. But um, I say late, that was probably like a hundred laps to go when he passed him, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Denny clearly the fastest car at the end, but Ty was right there. Ty had a lot of speed. I'm starting to think Ty is going to have his first win by the end of the season. He has been running a lot better lately. Um, and makes me wonder if Ty had made the playoffs, how deep he would have gone. Cause he the last three or four races, he has been extremely fast. Yeah. They kind of turn it on at the wrong time, but yeah, right. Little too late. If he turned it on a few races earlier in the regular season, he might've made it. Yeah. But, Clearly, that's not going to happen now. He was close, even on points, but yeah. Um, I guess what notables moving forward? You got Bo Wallace that made it into the top twelve for the first time Barely. in his career, right? I think this was the first time he's made the playoffs in his career. Oh yeah, because last year he didn't make it, and then was on owners' points. Mm -hmm. um, Truex barely squeaking by. I thought he threw that one away when he smacked the wall with the rear end of the car, but I guess mm -hmm. he didn't break anything and kept going. And somehow advanced his way through. Literally, dude came in with the most playoff points of anyone, run the regular season championship, and still almost pissed it away and got eliminated in the first round. Like, how? Yeah. How do you even do that? I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he better turn it around or having that kind of a round in the next three races, he ain't going to make the round of eight. No. And I don't, I don't know what to feel about that with the playoff system, because while it is kind of stupid that he won the regular season championship and then almost didn't make it out of the round of 16. I also sort of, I hate saying this. I sort of appreciate the fact that the playoff system makes you do well the entire season you can't have three weeks off yeah well yes and no because he had three weeks off and still advanced now if this had been the previous format the chase format i think he'd have been done oh yeah. he would not be winning the championship under that format three mulligans in a row to start the playoffs you would not be digging out of that hole yeah it's the opposite of what tony stewart used to do <laughs> yeah exactly especially what he did in 2011. Yeah. Um, but, and I almost wonder if that wouldn't have ruined his season in a full season points format. I got to see, I think, I want to say the iceberg puts up the regular, like what the full season oh, points yeah. would be. I know what you're talking about. Um, let me see if I can find that, if he's put it up yet, if Truex would still be the, um, the points leader, he hasn't put that up yet, uh, but I think he would be because going into this race, he had a, uh, 62 point lead over Chris Busher in the full season points. So I don't think he would have lost 62 points in this race. So Full season, yeah, he he still would be the, the points leader even after these three bad races. That's a crazy stat anyway because we're talking about full season points and you just said Chris Busher. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> the the full season points are kind of wild, to be honest, because Busher would be second, Keselowski would be fifth, Byron would be seventh. Yeah. Um, Well, if you think about it, Byron, the weeks he wasn't winning, he was like, 20 something yeah kyle bush would be fourth in an rcr car yeah kyle bush fourth but austin dillon would be 30th <laughs> <laughs> um stenhouse would be 15th stenhouse 15th ty gibbs 16th suarez 17th mcdowell would be 18th in full season points Chase Elliott would be 24th. Didn't both Spire cars do better than both Trackhouse cars this week until LaJoy crashed? I don't 
think so because track house cars are both outside the top 20 the entire race right but the other spire car is ty dillon better than austin dillon i don't know about that um they're both uh, it's like a battle of mid for those teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um no ty dillon well he crashed too so i don't know where he was running before that but he finished he 33rd why do i not remember he crashed i don't remember he crashed either i was he in he was in the lajoy wreck oh yeah yeah I don't. I don't okay, know. So that was. I guess the yeah. That would have went would've... on default because the two spire cars crashed each other out, right? <laughs> yeah, the, he would. He was out after that wreck because everybody else that was out from a wreck was Logano, Justin Haley, and Ryan Newman, and they were all out within three laps of each other. So that was definitely oh, all yeah. from that one wreck. Yep. Oh, I was yeah. so happy when Logano was like frogging his way down the track after getting in that rig <laughs> the left rear tire just bouncing like a basketball <laughs> reverse lightning mcqueen in the rear end. yeah right <laughs> never been so happy to see that now to a driver no we do feel for the joy logano fans out there no we don't um well i do i, I can't don't. speak for tyler i guess I um joy logano <laughs> you think I hate interesting Denny stat <laughs> from that though um that is the first time under the playoff format that the reigning champion has been eliminated after the round of 16. Yeah. Which doesn't surprise me because I don't feel like Logano has had a great season to begin with. Well, um, NC so, team hasn't. Right. Well, I mean, hell, Cindric was like five laps down very early in this race. I don't know what happened to him. Um, he ended up 12 awesome laps Cindric down in 32nd. He was the last car running 12 laps down in 32nd. I would argue that Austin Cindric happened to Austin Cindric. Yeah, right. Um, I don't think he's that good. I don't either. Um, he had a his... couple good years in Xfinity, but outside of that, I have never been high on Austin Cindric. Well, especially I would argue his Xfinity success was the fact that he was what the only Ford factory team in Xfinity. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got all of Penske and Ford behind you in Xfinity, you better be winning races. I know, right? Uh well no because SHR Xfinity was a thing at that point too so there was, was at least the, it was only the two of them though it was him and Riley uh, yeah Herbst. I think so I think you're right because there wasn't two SHR if your cars competition is Riley Herbst you know I think that was pre Riley Herbst was it yeah I don't remember who was in the ninety eight at that point let's find out twenty twenty the year. Cindric won the championship. The 98 was... That seems too early for Herbs. It was Briscoe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I was going to say, that seemed too early for Herbs, but I, I couldn't remember that it was Briscoe. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when the other Ford team is Briscoe, like, he's got some competition there. Yeah. Because um, Briscoe actually has talent. Right. Um, but I've, I've never been high on Cindric. I mean, he had a couple of good years in Xfinity, but outside of that... Especially back in his truck days, like I didn't think there, like he was like the king of nepotism in my mind because he was only there because of his dad. The only race he ever won in the truck series was because he punted Kaz Grala out of the way in the keyhole at Mosport. Sport. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, he was mid his entire time in trucks in a Brad Keselowski racing truck. Like those were the top four trucks at the time. Yeah. And he, the only way he can win is by punting the leader out of the way on the last lap in the keyhole at Mosport. Yeah, I would argue that Cindric's entire career has been one of those he's only there because of people he knows kind of things, which which sucks, I think. I get it, but him and the Dillons and all that kind of stuff, it's just, you know, if Austin Dillon didn't know the people he knew, he would not be there anymore. No, not at all. Um, you know, I I believe that, too for Austin Cindric until he had those couple of good years in Xfinity. And then I was like, okay, maybe he actually does have some talent. And then he's come to the cup series and outside of winning the Daytona 500 hasn't done anything. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Like you forget that he's on the track. Most of the time he's never competitive well, and he's in yeah, one of the I, best Fords in the field. See the two car. I'm like, Brad Kozlowski. No, 
<laughs> Who is that? <laughs> yeah, right? That's like a genuine reaction I have when I see the two car now. And that's he's not done what so... I, that's not what I've come to expect from Team Penske. Right. He's done so little in the two car that you, you can't even remember that he's in there because he's not done anything for you to associate him with that car. Yeah. I associate him more with the Xfinity TV booth broadcast than anything. <laughs> And he's just an awkward dork when he's in the TV booth, which is kind of endearing. But uh, speaking of which, he uh, his you know how Bristol, they do the the walkout songs. They pick their own song to walk out to. Yeah, his walkout song. um, Hang on, I got to find it here. Um, Somebody posted a list of what the walkout songs were, and it was hilarious. It was something from SpongeBob. Did somebody pick the Max Verstappen song? Because that'd be hilarious. What Max Verstappen song? Uh, I guess Max Verstappen has a song now. I did not know that. Um, he Cindric walked out to Goofy Goober Rock from SpongeBob. Jesus Christ! <laughs> if I had to pick a song to match Cindric's face, that would be it. Yeah, right. <laughs> God, I thought the best one though was Ryan Newman walked out to a song called "Strokin." That yep, that's Ryan Newman. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, jeez. Bristol walkout songs are the best. God. Speaking <laughs> of Formula One, real quick, uh, guess who didn't win this week? Max didn't uh, win this week. No, he didn't. What? He didn't, even, he didn't even finish in the podium. What? Yeah. What happened? They suck for one week. But Since when? <laughs> they suck for one week. <laughs> both, both of them? Checo wasn't good either? Both Red Bulls qualified outside the top 10 in 11th and 13th. Who won? Science. Oh. This is the first race all year that a Red Bull car has not won. Yeah, that sounds about right. It, it I'm impressed right. that it was Signs. Because Leclerc is supposed to be the number one at Ferrari, but Sainz is consistently outperforming him. Yeah, I, I think they tuned this car more to Sainz instead of Leclerc. And, yeah. But look, uh, Sainz had to hold off uh, Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton at the end of the race. Hmm. Maybe I need to go back and watch it then. Yeah, right. I was thinking about that. And I mean, it just I, finished, what, two, three Colorado, hours ago? Colorado State game. So. Nice. <laughs> It just finished, what, two, two, three hours ago? Yeah, something around there. Okay, yeah, I need to go back and watch it then. I wasn't expecting anything worthwhile. I was just <laughs> expecting another... I was expecting to get on here and go, yeah, Max Verstappen won again. That was F1. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, he didn't. Nice. I don't remember where he finished. Let me see if I can find out real quick. I am a little disappointed, though, that Norris didn't win. Me like, too. I really want Norris to win. I like Lando Norris a lot. Well, and then the one race that McLaren's won recently, it was Ricardo that won at Monza a couple <laughs> years ago. Right. Um, this is actually the most competitive podium I've seen in like three years in F1. Sainz, Norris, Hamilton spread by 1.2 seconds. Nice. That's like IndyCar style top three. But Leclerc's I know, right? 21 seconds off. So <laughs> we're stepping fifth, Perez eighth. Hmm. Wow. That's wild. So Magnuson got points for Haas. Nice. Uh what else? Liam Lawson's actually doing pretty good. Um Who? Fill it, he's filling in for Daniel Ricardo who's filling in for uh somebody else that left the Toro Rosso that's not Toro Rosso, Alphatari. Alphatari. Uh, <laughs> it's been Toro Rosso for a while. I know, but <laughs> that's the last <laughs> time I actually paid attention to F1. But yeah. no, uh, Liam Lawson's filling in for Daniel Ricciardo after he broke his wrist. Hmm. Um, actually, he's been doing pretty well. He finished ninth. Um, hmm. Yeah. It's, that, it's wild to it. me that the really the only thing that qualifies a race to be good in F1 these days is Verstappen wasn't competitive. <laughs> well, or at least didn't win. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I don't care what yeah. happens if he finishes second, but if he wins, then it's like, Ugh. 
Yeah, right? If someone beats him, if there's a name other than Verstappen that wins the race, that makes it interesting. That's, that's how far a, F1 has fallen. That's a terrifyingly low benchmark. <laughs> I don't even remember it being this bad when Hamilton was dominating all the time. No, because then at least you had Nico Rosberg, who made the championship interesting until at least the last race. See, that's the thing. And I've made this comment multiple times now. I truly believe Checo could have made the championship competitive and Red Bull nerfed him. Yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah, because I wouldn't be surprised. Especially with all the comments that Helmut Marco's been making. Mm -hmm. He's like actually started saying some racist stuff about Sergio Perez. And I'm like, mm. maybe don't. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Checo was actually competitive with Max early this season. Like, they were really... Like, Checo was leading the points there yeah, for a couple weeks early. Points, yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's just not anywhere close for a few weeks. Enough yeah. to where he basically... There was no way he was going to catch back up. As long yeah, as Max he's, stayed he's doing Max things. points behind now. Yeah. Yeah. So... I, I really believe Red Bull had a hand in that. Like, they said, no, 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 this is Max's championship. You're the number two. <laughs> yeah, well, we got about six more years of that until he catches up to Hamilton's record, so mm -hmm. get used to it, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I um, can see uh, technical regulations got released for 2025 for F1. Okay. They're making the cars smaller, which will hopefully make them race better hmm okay maybe they won't be boat racing anymore <laughs> uh they won't be arca racing those f1 cars are bigger than my chevy colorado well your chevy colorado is not a very big truck though no but that colorados still, are not big trucks so i don't know if that's a good comparison damn big for an open wheel racing car are you saying big as in tall or long? Long. I mean... I've got the six-foot bed on it, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Does Kaylee like down that? that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, I think we need to talk a little bit about Arca before we... Um, move on today because there were some things to talk about with arca one the same uh, thing just we talk about every week with arca but different this week <laughs> kinda yes kind yeah um william swalich wins but didn't dominate in fact jesse love dominated and then i don't know where swalich came from at the end but he ran jesse down in the closing laps i think jesse's handling went away and he was super loose and there was really nothing he could do at the end. Just Swalich just drove right past him, and that was that. Um, so Swalich wins the race to clinch the East Championship, which he basically had it wrapped up coming in anyway. Like, anybody that thought he wasn't going to win the East Championship, I don't know what series you've been watching all year. Um, but either way, I like Swalich. Swalich is a good kid. Um Good to see him win the championship in his first year in ARCA. In fact, he is now the youngest East champion ever. Um, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure how old he is. I don't, I think I missed the actual number on that, but yes, he is the youngest East champion ever. Um, so there is that, um, not really sure what he's doing next year. I feel like he's just going to be back in ARCA back in the 18 next year. So probably another East championship for him. He'll, He'll he'll pull a Sammy Smith and win the East Championship two years in a row and then probably move to Xfinity just like Sammy did. Um, another week, another Sean Hingarani moment. I genuinely don't understand this kid. I really don't. Um, had some issues early. Um, I believe had some sort of a mechanical issue that put him multiple laps down early. He ended up like four laps down at the end of the race in uh, 15th, finished 15th. Had a run in with Caleb Costner late. Caleb Costner finished ahead of him in 14th, two laps down. But 
basically drove straight through Caleb Costner, like caught up to him with a few laps to go and like turns him, just drive straight through him, turns him. Costner saves it though. I don't think there was a caution for it. I don't remember there being a caution. Everybody kept going. Costner still finishes ahead of him in 14th, two laps ahead of him. Costner in his post-race interview, in fact, I'm going to link or I'm going to, I'm going to stick in the post-race interview from front stretch right here. Um, I'll link or I'll, I'll put pieces of it in. I'll link the full interview down in the description. Um, but Costner had some interesting things to say um, about Sean Hingarani after this race, most notably calling him an absolute turd. I can't for the life of me understand why this kid, Hingarani, is an absolute turd on the track. Which I find hilarious and very fitting. In fact, I'm. I feel like that just needs to be Sean's nickname going forward. Sean Absolute Turd Hingarani. <laughs> um, because that's how he drives. Yeah. Like, I'm to the point where I try to be fair and nice about everybody when I can. Uh, but it's gotten to the point where Sean has done so much stupid <laughs> that at this point, I am 100% okay just nicknaming him Absolute Turd. Because that's how he drives. Apparently, when Costner went up to him after the race and tried to have a conversation with him about it, asked him, hey, why did you drive through me? Apparently, Sean's response was... And his was, did you spot out and tell you it's a faster car behind you? Another two laps down? Yeah. Never, the, never mind the fact that you're two laps behind me. What? Yeah, I, I was... The the absolute arrogance. I I just I can't fathom it, for That's having done, do to you. for having done nothing. He's won a couple of West races, but otherwise he's done nothing. But he thinks he's the hottest out there. So we'll call him the absolute turd and call this the Toyota Racing Complex, and then just move nah, on. I, expect this. <laughs> I. I take exception to that because there's a lot of good Toyota drivers out there that do not have the ego that he has. In fact, most of them do not have the ego that he has. Some of them have egos. I'm not going to lie. Some of them have egos. Uh, but I don't know that any of them have an ego to the level that he has. Like, yeah. he is on a whole different plane of existence. He's out here acting like he's a Cup Series champion. When he's only when he's won a couple of West races and he's and he's in a Venturini car that he doesn't do a lot with most weeks. Sean Ingarani is a dude that shows up to a go kart track and slams into everybody when they go to park at the end of the race. <laughs> That's the best comparison I have heard. That that is exactly that is exactly Sean Ingarani. Sean I just, go kart hazard Ingarani. Sean, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, probably but not. if you're watching this, you got to be a little bit more humble, dude. Having an attitude like that is not going to get you very far in this sport. You're not Kyle Busch. You're not Denny Hamlin. I, also, I just, if you didn't laugh at that go-kart joke, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Denny Hamlin, we missed that with the cup race. Absolutely goaded post-race interview. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, I gained geez. so much respect for Denny. I know a lot of people, I think, lost respect for him in that moment. I gained a lot of respect for him in that moment. If you didn't see it, literally, um, is it Marty Snyder? I think Marty Snyder yeah. did the post-race interview. Uh, walks up to him on the front stretch, and all the fans are booing him. Like the, you, you can clearly hear so many more boos than cheers coming from the crowd. Then he stops for a second, looks up the crowd. Hey, hey, I beat your favorite driver. <laughs> Marty goes, well, who would that be? All of them walks away. <laughs> the absolute most badass mic drop interview I've ever seen in my life. I love it. I really think this is a different Denny Hamlin personality wise i think than we have seen in the past um he is so much more confident you could call it cocky it, probably both um 
than I think we've ever seen Denny Hamlin in the past. I believe he is taking lessons and advice from Michael Jordan on confidence. I I believe he he has sat down with Michael Jordan because I mean we know they're friends. They they co own twenty three eleven racing together. I'm sure they spend a decent amount of time together. I'm wondering if Jordan didn't sit down with him at one point and go, "Hey man, listen, you need to be a little more confident. Be a little more like me." I I am seeing shades of Jordan in his prime basketball career right now in the way that Denny Hamlin is acting. Yeah. So I I think that's exactly what's happening. I think Jordan is um maybe coaching him on how to be more confident and um believing in his abilities, we'll say. I think that might be the difference. This Denny Hamlin with this attitude I think is finally the Denny Hamlin that can win a championship. Yeah, and I think at this point you got to make him the championship favorite, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we'll see how it goes. I just think it'll be hilarious if we say Denny Hamlin's changed for like the twelfth time, <laughs> and then just gets wadded up in the wall at Phoenix. Have we ever said that though? I don't remember ever saying Denny's changed before. Not like this. Not like this, but I feel like almost every year when Denny has a chance to win championship, people are like, oh, it's different this year. And it's like, he still chokes it. I don't know that I ever remember hearing that before. Of course, when was the last time he had a, like he was this, didn't he win? That you could look at him at this. Huh? Didn't he win the regular season championship recently? Not that I remember. Um, won that really recently. Maybe, but I mean, the regular season champion is so forgettable at this point. Like, I barely remember that it was Truex this year. Yeah, right. Um, so I mean, it could have happened. Um, no, I feel like I don't know that I've ever really seen people say, "Oh, this year's different." Denny's going to win the championship this year. I mean, when's the last time he was? When's the last time he was even in the championship for? It's been at least two or three years, I think. And when's the last time he had like a legit shot at the championship? I don't like, yes, he's been in the championship four, but I don't remember a year that he's been in the championship four that you look at him and you go, oh, he's definitely going to compete for this at Phoenix. Like he's always been clearly like the third or fourth guy in the championship four when he's been in it. Yeah. I I feel like the last time he was truly competitive for a championship right down to the end was what was that year that he got beat by jimmy was that like 20 12 no 2012 was keselowski 13 i think it was 13 um yeah i i feel like that was the last time he was truly competitive for a championship right down to the end so it's it's been a while i feel like this is going to be the year though like the Denny yeah. Hamlin, the cocky Denny Hamlin that I'm seeing right now, that's a Denny Hamlin that can win a championship. That's a Denny Hamlin with the killer instinct of someone that can win a championship. And again, I'm going to loop this back to Jordan. I see the killer instinct that Jordan had in his prime basketball days right now in Denny Hamlin. Yeah. And- Honestly, I think Denny Hamlin has to win championship this year. Mm-hmm. If he wants to have the legacy that he wants, he's got to win it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a big, giant asterisk next to his name for as long as we talk about NASCAR. He can't do all this and not win a championship in multiple different formats. Mm-hmm. He's been competitive almost his entire career. You got to put it all together. See, the funny thing about this is, there's a lot of comparisons between him and Mark Martin, like calling him the modern day Mark Martin. Martin won so many races, but never won a championship. I don't know that I find that comparison completely fair because he's already eclipsed Mark Martin by a pretty good margin on how many races he's won. I mean, this is win number 51 for Denny. I I feel like whether he wins a championship or not, this is a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. 
And, and 51 is not where he's going to stop. 51 is not going to be his total at the end of his career. I think he's going to get at least to 60 wins, if not more than that. I feel like, yes, to cement his legacy, he needs at least a championship. But whether he wins a championship or not, I don't think that changes the fact that this this is a Hall of Fame career. I mean, 50-plus wins, championship or not, is a great career. Yeah, I still think you got to have the championship not question it, though. Right. No, I, I agree with that. You can't be this competitive for this long and not put it all together and consistently choke at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. You can't just shine out or just just disappear every time the pressure's on you and expect to be one of the greatest of all time. No, I agree. Um, and that's another thing. I feel like he's kind of accepting all of those memes about him this year and running with it. Like the, the whole, the fact that he chokes almost every single year going for the championship. Now that he's got his podcast, we've talked about this before, how he's got that segment called dear Denny, where the listeners will write in with questions to him and it's got that little jingle in it. Um, and it, one of the lyrics in there at some point is, uh, something about, uh, this ain't the racetrack, so maybe you won't choke. Um, like, the fact that he can laugh about that and have that in a jingle for a segment of his podcast, and he's got the the backbone to be able to let that roll off and accept that and laugh about it, that is, that is an unfazed Denny Hamlin that understands who he is and i think is ready to change that yeah but i think this year he's gotta win it to just make it not look like he's just accepted that that's who he is right you know i mean he's boys I, now <laughs> you can't be this competitive for this many years and not win a championship like Mark Martin, when he was winning races, it was in a different championship format. You had to be good every week of the entire season. Mm -hmm. This year, you can take it off and experiment with different setups and things like that and get ready for the final push. You got to win it now. It makes me wonder. Where was I going with that? I lost my train of thought. Makes me wonder where you're going. Yes, I just wonder. <laughs> I don't know what I'm wondering about, but I'm wondering about something. <laughs> Garth I'm wondering about modern, a lot of things. Garth is modern day Gandhi. Yes. Sean Hengarani is modern day absolute turd. I'm modern day Gandhi. What have we come to? That's a very good question. <laughs> Denny can accept that he chokes for the championship every year. I can accept that I'm Gandhi. I don't think that's where we were going. <laughs> That's where I'm going. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess since last time we had this IndyCar season's wrapped up, um, no more IndyCar. I'm very sad about it. Um, oh, Scott Dixon Tyler's gonna won. cry himself to sleep tonight. Yeah, right. Scott Dixon <laughs> won like the last three or four races of the season, which it would have been nice if he would started doing that like a couple months ago and actually made the championship fight worth it. You know what's funny is early in the season, I was kind of wondering, is he washed up at this point? Like, is he basically done? Are we seeing the end of Scott Dixon's career? And then he turns it on at the end of the season, like, oh, nope, he's still there. Yeah, I think he just got incredibly unlucky at the beginning of the season. I mean, at what, St. Pete, he got taken out by Pato Award while running inside the top five. And mm -hmm. stuff like that, if that hadn't happened at the beginning of the season, we'd probably be looking at another Scott Dixon championship. Yeah, And it's just interesting to see in full season points how that all adds up at the end of the year because you don't have that sort of consequence in NASCAR anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, it would be interesting to see IndyCar with a playoff format. Do I want to see that? No, not really. No, that would, But be, it would be interesting to see. That would be just, the for, just for a social fest. experiment. That would be the biggest crash fest you've ever seen in your life. Those Social guys... experiment, one year and one year only, IndyCar does a playoff format. 
or do like an eye racing thing where he's like do it for there we go so we don't kill somebody the problem with doing it as an eye racing thing is some of these guys are better at eye racing than they are in real life and some of them are a lot worse at eye racing than they are in real life yeah i mean we saw jimmy johnson on eye racing yeah <laughs> that was uh that was not fun yeah <laughs> I, f- I think I could beat Jimmy Johnson on iRacing. All right. Next week, podcast <laughs> Jimmy Johnson versus Garth Allen. <laughs> That's right. We're making it happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, is that all you got on IndyCar? Pretty much. Um, there's a whole bunch of silly season stuff going on, but not really worth talking about. There's going to be a lot more driver changes over the rest of the winter it's not even october i hate this part of entity car they did uh leak some stuff about the schedule for next year it hasn't come out yet but they are oh here's one they're doing an exhibition race at um the place that they went to for preseason testing this year um yeah i know we're talking about um thermal yeah they're doing a exhibition race the thermal club and it's just going to be everybody just goes out for a race in preseason testing and the winner gets a million dollars. They're going to have some thermal club guys like club members be part of the team, stuff like that, um, like different team members, I, I guess. I'm not really sure how that part's going to work. But so it's kind of like the all-star race if they're racing of? for a million dollars, except kind there's no of, format yeah. and everybody's in it. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. just a random race, which I'm actually really excited about because is it going to be televised this time? Last time thermal yeah. wasn't televised or anything. Yeah, it's. I'm pretty sure it's going to be. It's probably going to be like a Peacock thing, but yeah. yeah. Um, I'm actually. They really couldn't excited even put thermal it. on Peacock last time, though. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that, <laughs> but I'm excited to see this because Thermal Club is actually a pretty cool track. Mm-hmm. and not a lot of people get to see it so i think it'll be cool to see the indy cars going around in there uh mm-hmm. they teased at some more international races and i believe milwaukee mile is all but confirmed for next year nice so um speaking of international races apparently so next year um there i'd say there's a 95 percent chance that NASCAR will either be at Montreal or Mexico City next year. Montreal, please. Uh, And apparently the backup plan for that, if both of those don't work, and Mexico City would be the track that uh, F1 races on. It's not like a street race or anything. Oh, ew. Yeah. Um, Apparently the backup plan, if neither of those work, I guess is a second homestead race. Really? That's the best we could come up with? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Wow, okay. I'm I'm going to guess Montreal. I think Montreal is their number one choice if they can make it work, and I feel like it has a very good chance of happening, so it's probably yeah. going to be Montreal. Yeah, I mean, we've been there before with Xfinity and, and trucks? Well, we've been to Mexico City with Xfinity, too. No, I don't remember that at all. It's been probably 15 years but yeah it's been i was they, like seven so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah xfinity did used to go to mexico city i think denny actually won one of those races of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> when he was in the uh the 20 rockwell automation car wow that's a yeah. blast from the past i know right I got a diecast of that around here somewhere. Oh my god! Of course you do. You have a diecast of everything. Well, it's a one sixty diecast of your own car. I wish. Um, <laughs> it, no, it's a one sixty fourth. It's not a one twenty fourth. It's from like when I was a kid. It's an open one sixty fourth around here somewhere. I've if got you, so if many you see Garth at Target like ripping through the diecast shell. <laughs> he's trying to. I don't have to do that anymore because car. they put them on Lionel's site now. Oh, really nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're very slow with it. Like it's way after they get released in the stores. Like they just put the winter circle wave up. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Um, All right. Let's get this wrapped up. Yes. Um, okay. So very quickly before we get to picks, um, trucks, Corey Heim wins advances to the next round. 
uh, beats out Christian Eckes, who basically dominated the race and then kind of choked it at the end. And Heim got around him in the late laps. I was so sad. Yes, I think a lot of people were. Um, the playoff mustache did not save Eckes this time. I love how Jamie Little at some point, I don't remember if that was in the truck race or the Arca race, was talking mad on that mustache, like talking about how ugly it was. <laughs> Let's it was the broadcasting skills, and then we can talk about music yeah. mustaches, right? <laughs> God, um, but yeah, that was that was basically, I think, all that was really notable to talk about in the truck race. I can't think of anything else. Pretty much, um, Xfinity, uh, most of Junior Motorsports crashes. Junior was extremely fast, and I think actually would have had a chance to win if he hadn't caught on fire mid-race yeah um that was unfortunate i did think it was really cool how he's literally on fire recognizes this stops on pit road before he gets to his pit box in the 20 pit box and they actually came out and put the fire out like it wasn't one of these oh you're a different team we're not gonna help you it's no he's on fire we're gonna put this out (laughs) yeah that was pretty cool seeing the 20 guys just yank him out of the car (laughs) yeah I was surprised that wasn't a caution, though, because he parked it in the middle, like, not in the middle middle of pit road, but he wasn't fully in the pit box. It's like halfway in the box. Yeah, and it wasn't even his box, and he just got out and walked away, so they had to, like, get a wrecker out there or something, I would assume. I definitely would have thrown a caution for that. Yeah, that that actually surprised me they didn't throw a caution for that. Um, But either way, Allgaier storms through the field late takes tires late storms through the field daniel hemrick though almost won by literally just parking it in the outside lane and no one could get around him on the bottom he wasn't faster than any of those guys they literally just couldn't pass him on the bottom yeah so it's how you got to do it bristol now yep well you say that and i don't know if it's traction compound or what it is but most of the time, especially in the cup race, it seemed like it was more of a bottom feeding race. Yeah, it's just weird how the lanes work in Bristol, where sometimes one comes in and just sometimes it doesn't. It's, well, it's because of traction compound, like PJ1 and that kind of <laughs> because we um, they had to repave the track. We could have right. left it alone. Right, because without the traction compound, it would be a one groove top lane track right now. Mm-hmm. But they put the traction compound down on the bottom. And the bottom will work until either that goes away or it gets activated or you get rubber laid down on the top or whatever. So it varies it up a little bit. I feel like Bristol is the one track where I can actually approve of using traction compound that it actually improves the racing. Only because they ruined the track previously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that is uh, that's about it for Xfinity and Trucks. Uh, so we'll move on to predictions. Uh, Surprisingly, no Arca this weekend. This first off weekend Arca's had in a while. Um, no trucks. Uh, just Cup and Xfinity at Texas. And then I don't think there's F1 this weekend. I forgot to look at that. I don't believe we have an F1 race this weekend. If the app Probably. will load. Uh, let's see. Upcoming Japan. Yes, Japan is this weekend. Max Verstappen. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, Checo, I guess. Um, <laughs> all right, so Texas this weekend. Xfinity will be Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on USA. Tyler, who you got? I'm going to take John Hunter Nemechek. I don't know where we're at as far as cutoff races for Xfinity Series, but if Nemechek hasn't punched his way in the next round, I think he'll do it this weekend. Uh, this is race number two of the first round, so he technically has not yet because Allgaier is the only one locked into the next round now. Yeah, I think he'll pick up another win and punch his ticket. Okay. Yeah, this round for Xfinity is Bristol, Texas, the Roval. Oh, wow. Speaking okay. of the Roval, I hear this is the last Roval race. Really? Yes, that is what I hear. Yes. Um, I, though, am going to go with Cole Custer to win this race. Mr. Consistency this season. Um, I feel like he picks up another win and locks himself into the round of eight. 
All right, on to the Cup Series. That will be Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on USA from Texas. Tyler, who wins the Cup race at Texas, the first race of the round of 12, and locks themselves into the round of eight? I'm going to go with Kyle Busch. I think the RCR cars, for whatever reason, are pretty good at Texas. Um, out of the mile and a half, so that's probably one of their better ones. Kyle Busch yeah, Austin Dillon's kinda, actually won there. <laughs> yeah. Kyle Busch has been sitting kind of laid back a little bit recently, but I think he's going to kick it back on for a week and then not have to worry about it for a couple weeks. All right. Solid choice. Um, I'm going to go with a guy that has been pretty good at mile and a half. So, I mean, he's good everywhere, but um, he's been kind of hit or miss this year. But I think Kyle Larson wins and locks himself into the round of eight. Kyle Larson and, almost made it away with it this weekend. He started last and finished second. Yes. Wait, he got all the way up to second? Mm-hmm. I didn't notice that. I thought Ty was still second. Nope. Oh, okay then. Was he catching Denny at the end? Yeah, sort of. Not really. You know how traffic hmm. works at Bristol. Right. All right. So, yeah, Larson may be turning it on at the right time. So, um, that is predictions for this weekend. Only two races to predict for or i guess technically three i guess we technically made f1 picks um so yeah that is uh that's gonna do it for this week we're gonna let tyler go so he can uh go watch his football uh go watch the colts lose yeah well sounds like a great afternoon yeah i envy you so much i'm sure you do have fun at work yeah uh, i feel like i'll have more fun at work than i will watching colts lose <laughs> So uh, that is uh, that's going to be it for this week. I don't think we're going to have an episode the next week because um, of Tyler's crappy work schedule. But um, so we will probably see you in two weeks um, to recap uh, Talladega, I think. Yeah, that, uh, that'd be the Talladega recap. So, um, yeah, see you in two weeks to recap Talladega and look ahead to the Roval. So. Have a good uh, next week or two, depending on what it becomes. And uh, we'll see you when we see you. Uh, I'm Garth. That's Tyler. This is the Rookie Stripes Podcast on Racing News Now. <laughs>